Um, <laughs> I actually have no idea how to start this, but might as well YOLO it, right? Hey everyone, welcome to Catching Up. Um, this is the solo podcast. This is the first episode. We're already starting off good, and um, yeah. And pretty much just to introduce you and to get you into the mood of this new format I'm doing and, you know, this more serious format I'm doing, despite the whole Alistair picture in the fucking background. Um, this podcast will be a lot more personal and it'll be a lot more introspective. I have no idea if I'm using that word right. Um, and, you know, I've been wanting to do this for a while while I was making Music Idiots, and Music Idiots is still going to continue, don't worry about it at all, Music, music Idiots is still a thing, it's still going to be continuing, Some more seasons are going to come out, but I'll save that for the other podcast, because that's not what this is about, Um, catching up, basically, it's you guys, the audience, the listeners, catching up with me on my life, or just on other shit in general, you know what I mean, and you know, me opening up on a platform, it took me, it took a lot to do this, it, it, it really took a lot to do this, because it's like, I'm not one for really sharing my personal life on the net, because you know, a lot of people could use that against you, but I'm not afraid anymore, you know what I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, basically yap for an hour, <laughs> well not an hour, whatever time, and just know this, I am plotting to make this series six episodes, but after episode six, I'm going to give you guys permission to request anything you would want me to talk about in the comment section. Um, a lot of stories, a lot of interesting stuff to tell, you know, a lot of interesting takes on life, interesting takes on a lot of shit. And just keep in mind, like, despite what I'm about to talk about this episode, like I said, it's not a music podcast. It's not music idiots. It's a whole different format. But yeah, um, but speaking of the fucking devil, you see all the covers in the thumbnail. You see the Alistair picture. So let's get it started. Um, episode one. Well, we're gonna start this off a little bit right. Music has helped me do a lot in life. Um, music is amazing. Um, and just so many albums in the world can really help a lot of people you know, through any stage of their life, through any mental health of their life, but also it can influence you in really good or in really bad ways as well. Like, uh, let's say you're listening to Future. Future's a great fucking artist. I love Future. But, like, let's say you're letting what he's talking about influence you. Like, all of a sudden, now you want to go do Lean. Now you want to do Cody, and you want to do all this stuff. Obviously, it's a negative effect, you know? And music can also make you a little bit toxic. But if you just... I don't know, but I I guess to phrase it, it's like sometimes a lot of the toxic music can help. A lot of the toxic music can help you actually gain more confidence in yourself. It's just that a lot of people call confidence, you know, toxic nowadays. A lot of people call it that. But um, yeah, you know, you're catching listening to Future. You're catching listening to Thug. You're catching listening to. to these, I I still listen to Kanye, as you guys know. You know, Vulture's amazing album. You know, a lot of songs that hit really close to home for me right now. And, you know, just a lot of good shit, bro. And overall, like, I just, I just, just want to really, really tell you guys, like, a lot of these albums you've seen in the thumbnail have helped me through a lot. For All the Dogs, obviously, helped me, you know, get over relationships and, or past relationships that are really bad. Tried our best from For All the Dogs. Hits way too close to home, bro. Way too close to home. And Away From Home is just, for me, a lot of the lyrics in there, while not all the lyrics I relate to, there's a lot of lyrics in there I do relate to, and it's actually really good, and, you know, just a really amazing song. Um, You know, and, and of course, you got the love songs, you know what I mean? Like, for me, you know, I got Amen, you know what I mean? I'm about to send it to my shorty, <laughs> and hearing a couple, you know what I mean? Or... Whenever I'm about to send it to her, I don't know. Now, let me look through the track list right now. I can't believe I'm not even prepared for this. Um. <laughs> so yeah, uh, a lot of 
really love like songs like tried our best really good members only is really good um what, what will pluto do is actually a really big confidence booster because you know what i mean like the okay and that's just the ass okay it really just hits it just hits um oh god my legs hurt shit don't mind me i just woke up well not really just woke up i kind of just been bored all day you know missing a certain someone but that's just aside from that um yeah so for all the dogs is while it may not be the best Drake album in the world for me, it's Drake's best album since like ever ago, bro. Like I prefer listening to this over a lot of other songs. But yes, Virginia Beach, amazing song, you know, for helping me, you know, you know, do a breakup, falling in love, just whatever the case may be. You already know how Drake be with the tunes. Um, Amen with Tizo being a really chill, really enticing kind of track. And it's just really just, you know, I fuck with it. And then Calling For You, absolute banger of a love song. Even though that bitch, that one bitch be yapping in the middle way too much um, for like a whole two minute of the beat. And while Drake did do better than 21, I still really like both their verses. And I really just, it just hits. Uh, Fear of Heights, being a confidence booster. First was a shooter as well. I don't give a fuck being one as well. But then you got Samuel, Bahamas Promises, Tried Our Best, Drew Picasso. Just oh, BBO love a little. Just a little bit of BBO love, not too much. And Polar Opposites. Like, those songs be helping me, bro. Be helping a nigga out for real. And, yeah, it's just amazing. And, you know, that's what For All The Dogs has helped me through. At least as in terms of recency shit. You know what I mean? And, obviously... I already hinted at this before. Let's go on to the next album, um, Man on the Moon 3. Man on the Moon 3, in my opinion, is really good. I really like Man on the Moon 3. And, you know, a lot of the songs on there hit way too close to home. Like, Solo Dolo Part 3, man. That was such a fucking... Let me get a track. Hold on. Man on the Moon 3. Oh, and by the way, I hope you're having a good day today. I hope, you know, a lot of people that are listening to the podcast are having a good day. And if you're not, hopefully my podcast is some way to, you know, did, take your mind off it for now. <laughs> I don't fucking know, bro. You do you do what you want, bro. Whatever tickles your fancy. <laughs> Whatever tickles your fancy, bro. You got it. Um, But yeah, man, like, Tequila Shots, amazing intro to Man on the Moon. Another Day is low-key just me... It's just, someone actually inspired me to say this, fucking me core. <laughs> you know who you are. But, um, yeah, I guess, I guess another day it's just me core. Like, fucking, God, man, thank God it's just another day, same old nigga in the same old day. Like, bro, another day is just so amazing. She knows this is a banger, banger of a love song. Dive is just bliss. Just bliss. Damage. This is so. God, that track just drags me in, bro. Damage. Just such a good track from Nami on the Moon 3 shit. And yeah. The Void also made Nazir cry, but we'll talk about that later. Shout out to my boy Nazir. You know, he's on Music Idiots. He's probably going to tune into this, you know, just usual, usual. Um. Shit. What am I on about now? <laughs> I'm not going to lie, bro. I am so fucking nervous at the fact that I'm doing this shit, but like, you know, fuck it, we ball, you know what I mean? Balls to the wall, my balls out, I'm ready to do this shit, you feel me? Um, God, I can't wait for everyone to see this new form, man, just listen to how I'm speaking. A lot of people would be like, are you trying to entice me with your voice? <sighs> no. No. Yeah, but, um, let me stop. Nicely says we need a serious fucking platform. I'm out here just crumpling a little bit. Just, d d don't mind me. Don't mind me. Shut up. Um, Heaven on Earth, Show Out, <sighs> Dope Tracks, Solo Dolo Part 3, the best track on the album. Ah, just, that track got me. Sad People got me. Elsie's Baby Boy, such a good instrumental track. The Void obviously made me and Nazir just rethink shit, bro. Like, me and Nazir just like, wow. And, you know, Nazir obviously crying to the song. <laughs> was pretty funny, too. Um... God, we only reached nine minutes. I thought we would at least reach like 15 or 20 by now. And we're not even like halfway done with this bitch, bro. That's the funny part. Um, 
Yeah, Loving Me, great song. I always respect Phoebe Bridgers. Br Bridgers, right? Okay, I almost said Bridges. <laughs> Ily almost said Phoebe Bridges. Nah, bro, we're, nah, bro, we're good. Uh, the Pale Moonlight, pretty good. Rockstar Nights, mm, love it. And the 40 Kids is really inspiring. So yeah, Man on the Moon 3 actually helped me at a time where like I was extremely depressed. I was going through a lot of drama. I was going through a lot of bad friendships. And like, you know, hell, it was pushing me, you know, to that point, to that real point. We're not going to talk about what the point is. I feel like a lot of people will know. Man on the Moon 3, back in 2020 when it came out, it just it helped going on that trip, showing this album to other people and just being like, hey, you know, this is my comfort album. Well, it was my comfort album for a while, but I think I'll start going back to it more. It's just that as I grew up, you know, obviously the next few albums you've seen a thumbnail have obviously helped me through a lot as well. So it's like, you know, it's whatever. Um, Yeah, so yeah, Man of Moon 3 was my comfort album. And hold on. My bad, yeah, I'm texting the the goats. I promise this is not typing ASMR, you know what I mean? I ain't in the mood of whispering y'all niggas ears. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Ah, oh, shit, what was I talking about? Albums, yes. <laughs> um, but yeah. So, and obviously, Lord I Know being really good, too. But, like, yeah, Man on the Moon 3, just in 18 songs and 58 minutes, I absolutely loved showing off this album to a lot of people. Low Key might be my favorite Kid Cudi album. It's Man on the Moon 3. I know, I, I know a lot of the nerds will be like, oh, you, you didn't choose one, you didn't choose two. I'm just over here like, bro, bro, let me choose what I want to choose. <laughs> and, like, um... Ah, shit, nigga. What was I on about? Yo, I can't believe y'all actually listened to me yap for 12 fucking minutes <laughs> about albums that I like. Oh, man. Don't worry. We'll, we'll keep going with this. I just love looking at the fucking Alistair devious-ass smile. Hold on. Um, but yeah, <laughs> Man on 3 is definitely my favorite album, definitely helped me through a time of need, like a lot of other Cuddy albums, a lot of people have their personal favorites, I have my personal favorites, and it's just, yeah man, Cuddy, it's amazing, and the fact that Travis Scott has such a good hand in the production, and you know, just the, the vibe of a lot of the songs that were being played, a lot of the songs that I was listening to, you know? Man on the was probably one of, my, one of my first albums, aside from World that, like, really dragged me into Cuddy, Cuddy and Trav's world, you know what I mean? It's just really good. Um, yeah. My bad, y'all, hold on. Sorry, I had, I had a little bit of I'll check something real quick. But, um, <laughs> obviously, you know, uh, yeah, so we've got that album, Man on 3. This has really helped me through a lot. And yeah, this is, this, I definitely recommend the albums I'm talking about, by the way, you know, just on some cool shit. Uh, what's the next album? Oh, yeah, Twit. Yo. My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy is one of the best feelings ever when it comes to me listening to music. It's just, God, you don't understand. I mean, you might, you, you might understand, but you don't understand, though. <laughs> You see, it's like you could say you understand, but it's like you kind of don't. You feel me? But let me not be condescending. Um, all this money on the floor, ten racks to it up. Watch how I do it. <laughs> My bad, y'all. Damn, it's cold up in this bitch. Whatever. Um. Yeah, so as I was saying that, as I was saying that, I was saying though, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, uh, obviously my favorite Kanye album of all time. Even though I've really been loving Vultures, Twisted Fantasy is my favorite album. Um, 
just the feeling of it, like the confidence of it, like this, like how I put it, if I describe this album is basically, look, I apologize for whatever shit, you know, I might have done, whatever shit that different opinion you have of me, but at the same time, suck my fucking balls, bro. That's the feeling I get from this album, like Dark Fantasy, such a, like a good intro, like having Nicki Minaj do the narration back when Nicki Minaj was good, still, um, or like in her prime. Uh, but yeah, Dark Fantasy is just amazing, you know, confidence just oozing through the song, and that just helps me get through my day. Gorgeous. Gorgeous is just like a make or break kind of song. It's like when you gotta lock in, when you know you got a goal in mind, you know if you fail it, when you feel like if you fail it, there ain't nothing left, so you just start locking in. C Cuddy obviously is on the song too. It's really great, really amazing album, man. Um, and just song in general for it being five minutes and 57 seconds. It's just, it's a work throughout. Uh, power. What can I say about power? It is the most ultimately just confidence boosting track. The samples he uses, the lyrics he has, like, I'm gonna say it again. Like I said earlier, fucking me core fam. Okay. So it's the fantasy is a dope fucking album. And like I said, a lot of these albums I'm talking about definitely check out definitely check out um but yeah uh <laughs> sorry y'all um just looking at a group chat you know the goats and everything you know just texting in there um yeah so twist fantasy power ultimate confidence booster then all of the lights just a triumphant anthem bro if you were not playing like i feel like all of the lights, I'm. I would definitely play if I'm having a victory lap moment. Now, monster, monster feels like the role of like accepting into a lot of people's eyes that you're the villain. That you don't. You, you don't gotta please them all the time. That you don't want to please them all the time. Like you know what I mean. Like you know the gossip, gossip, nigga, just stop it. Everyone knows I'm a motherfucking monster. Like that shit is so good, bro. And obviously, Nicki Minaj's verse. Nicki Minaj being like one of her best verses of her whole career. A monster, but, we, but that's a story for another day. But yeah, like the whole monster vibe is just really good. So Appalled is. So Appalled is just me. So Appalled is just me. Hold on. But, um, yeah, sorry, how bad. Give me a second. Um, <laughs> you know what, bro, in the moment that, that, that they're typing just stupid shit, let me just shout out a couple people. I'm so, I, I know, I know, I know. You're like, bro, you're stalling. I'm really not, but I am. <laughs> Uh, shout out, shout out Destiny, shout out Angel, shout out Adam, shout out to Safi, you know, on the Music Idiots podcast, shout out to Sora, and shout out to my brother Wavy, just, you know, really good people that have been just keeping my brain together, but that's just for another podcast, <laughs> but, um, was it better? Oh yeah, it's just fantasy, so Paul just makes me feel like a fucking beast, feel like a fucking, you know, not like a god. That's too, that's too, too, too egotistical. Like me feeling like, yeah, just a beast. Devil in a New Dress. Devil in a New Dress is a perfect breakup song, but it's also a perfect love song in some way. Maybe? I don't know. Um, the Devil in a New Dress is amazing. And I will not debate this with any of you. Um, Devil in a New, Devil in a New Dress is Rick Ross's best verse. Like, every time I hear that verse, I'm just like, ugh, I was just fucking loving that shit, you know? Um, Runaway, probably one of my favorite Kanye songs of all time. It's just... Only Runaway can make real niggas cry, bro. Especially me. And look, I know, I know I say, oh, you're such a crybaby. Shut the fuck up. Um, I rarely cry anymore to a lot of stuff. But when something hits me really hard like that, it's like, damn. Hell of a Life, Blame Game, good tracks. Lost in the World, good tracks. Who Survived America, good tracks. Just 
this album is a oh, oh, ultimate confidence booster the same goes for rodeo rodeo is actually really good too i really like rodeo um oh my this side is my favorite song probably actually you know what i'll say it probably my favorite travis scott song of all time oh my this side is such an inspirational anthem for me quavo's verse got me uh, and impossible perfect for when i'm in my feelings when i'm in love with someone when i'm liking with someone and then linking with them maria i'm drunk is the perfect anthem apple pie uh travis scott just i don't know he's like he doesn't have to it's like his lyrics he doesn't have to say much for it to be amazing like just the sound the subject of it all he can rap though for sure he can rap that's my you already know travis scott's my goat that boy could rap but um with other just like shit on rodeo it's just amazing you know uh wasted pretty good anthem 90210 is an amazing anthem nightcrawler is a party anthem piss on your grave is a confidence booster with kanye west on that bitch antidote being a classic and yeah just rodeo is just an amazing album uh it definitely just helps me boost up my confidence but it also helps me like flashback on a lot of moments i've had you know as a little child and everything um i'm gonna quickly go through vultures though vultures is obviously you know a really another good bounce back album you know uh but it's like it's really fun too because burn bro kanye's verse on burn who's not entertained by my pain who ain't cash a check off my name oh his verse on burn ty doll signs verse on big forgiveness problematic is such a good fucking song you know the second part of talking is really good stars is also just i don't know just a amazing track and you know just yeah vultures one pretty good too and now for utopia i've waited five years for this album and travis did not disappoint when i first heard this i was like oh ah oh, album of the year and i'm right and I'm going to stick by this, and I'm going to stand by this. Travis Scott should have gotten an album of the year over Killer Mid. But, um, yeah. So, Killer Mike, eh. Michael's great, but Topia should have gotten that Grammy. We all know, but we don't know how the Grammys is. Um, Hyena is such a chaotic track. Like, that shit makes me feel like I'm about to just go crazy, exercise, you know what I mean? Go ballistic. Thank God is just a grateful song. Modern Jam's a dance anthem. My Eyes... The first and second verse, bro, like, my eyes is so enticing, and that's just literally me. It's literally me. Sirens, amazing anthem. God's Country, amazing anthem. Meltdown and Fiend are just crazy. Those songs may go ballistic, but the song I relate to the most on Utopia has to be I Know. It's just Travis Scott just flashed through all his, like, past relationships, you know what I mean? Loving on someone, not knowing if it's because he's under the influence or not. And it's just amazing telekinesis thing like i finally achieved a goal in my life that i could you know telekinesis was just great because telekinesis that song makes you feel like you know my life is worth the pains it was worth the suffering but it was also worth the grind to reach that point to reach you know i guess a personal utopia you feel me like no pun intended and so further notice is just the ultimate breakup anthem like, Till Further Notice is just a perfect flashback anthem, but it's also, like, a To Be Continued kind of song. And I'm just ready for Travis Scott's next album. Now, as usual, um, this is going to be a little short, but this is catching up. And I hope you guys enjoyed the first episode, and, you know, I hope you guys show up for the next one. But, yeah, and, you know, if you have sat here and you have talked to me and just, you know, thank you. Just thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for sitting down with me and having our talk um as usual in the comments you can request something i mean obviously a lot of these episodes are going to be set in stone but like if you have any ideas you know for what i should talk about in one of these episodes and you know what you're curious about asking me questions ask me how i'm doing and i'll be down to that i'll be down to just you know get this whole show on the road and like i said before music idiots will come back you will be seeing me nazir kitsune and a certain guest for the next episode um he's really he's really cool i find him cool but he's also a hype ass dude now my boy uh if you're watching this podcast when we go on wwe you could talk but you're gonna let but you're gonna let other niggas talk too
<laughs> like I know, like dude, like not gonna lie, like just me getting back into wrestling is so fucking unexpected. But like thanks to you, you know, the guest for the next episode, music idiots, I've been able to get back into wrestling. All right, well, that was it. Um, I gotta head out. I gotta go. But please support this podcast. You have any suggestions? You already know what to do. And yeah, you guys have an amazing day. For real. Um, love you all. Shout out, you know, the people I shout out. Shout out Nazir. Shout out Maria. Shout out Destiny. Shout out Angel. Shout out Adam. And just shout out to everyone in the group chat. <laughs> you know, and shout out to the supporters too. The others that obviously, you know, are just here to support me in any way, shape, or form. And yeah, let's run up, let's run up the views on these. And I'll see you in the next video. This is uh, Jules signing out. You have caught up with me.